I'm your host, Annie Bowles, and this is News Du Jour. Hey everyone, and welcome back to the News Du Jour, a calmer space to consume the news. So today we are going over Trump and basically the charges that seem pretty imminent here. We're also going over the Silicon Valley Bank and what exactly went down with it, as well as a little glimmer of hope for both the corals and the environment at large. Let's get into it. Real quick, before we launch into all that, though, I wanted to let you guys know that I've heard from some of you that you would like to have an ad-free option of the news du jour, and so we are going to start, as of today, uploading our episodes to Patreon without ads. So if you're already a patron, you're already paying, you can get each day's episode without ads. And if you would like to have that feature, just go to patreon.com forward slash sugar free media. And Patreon is spelled P A T R E O N. So patreon.com forward slash sugar free media. The link is also in our show notes. And you can become a patron for just $7.99 a month. So basically $8 a month and get all of our episodes for free, as well as like we have a cookbook in there. We have a discussion board. We have all kind of other features as part of our Patreon package. So definitely go check it out. Anyway, without further ado, Trump seems to be sinking deeper as of late into his mess in Manhattan. You know, the sharks are circling, you guys, and they can smell blood in the water. It seems that prosecutors may have made an effort to warn the former president that criminal charges are potentially imminent so that he can get his affairs in order, especially pertaining to his presidential race. Now, Again, this is just rumor, word on the street, but it's it's being rumored that prosecutors have even invited Trump to testify in front of the grand jury himself over the next week, sometime in the coming week. So he has a lot going on right now, <laughs> as we know, and a lot at stake. If you guys remember, this specific case in Manhattan is about using campaign funds to pay hush money to a former porn star, Stormy Daniels, in order to prevent her from coming out with information about their affair during the 2016 presidential elections. So that's just a little recap of what's going on there. But Michael Cohen, the president's former fixer, he appears to have agreed to testify in front of this grand jury, which makes an indictment seem all the more possible. As we know from the past, Michael Cohen was nothing short of forthcoming with investigators and prosecutors providing a very valuable insight into how the former president operates. He kind of, you know, paints a picture of a mob boss like character who does not use email, you know, doesn't want to put things in writing. Trump is said to be able to give direction with a simple facial expression. Michael, being so candid, was actually a really big piece in the former president's undoing. And Trump, of course, has said that he will continue to run for president in 2024, um, regardless of whether he's indicted or not. So he's going to not let anything stand in the way of his pursuit of the White House in 2024. But it's really hard to imagine that criminal proceedings would not affect his already fraught presidential run. At a minimum, they would definitely serve as a distraction for the candidate, his team, and the American people, if not outright disqualifying him in some voters' eyes. And Though the maximum jail sentence wouldn't be very long, it'd be about four years, and he may or may not even be required to serve that, 
just one photograph of Donald Trump in an orange jumpsuit, it could be enough to tarnish his political career for good. We'll definitely keep you guys posted. And next up, Silicon Valley Bank. So, you guys, the only way to describe this situation is the perfect storm. Basically, two catastrophes came together to produce a third. The first catastrophe is the collapse, or at least the major slowdown, of the tech industry. This bank, like we mentioned, is located in Silicon Valley. So, a lot of people using this bank are in the tech industry. Then secondly, the major issue here is the Fed's raising interest rates. When they do this, it naturally causes bonds to be worth less. And bonds are how banks protect and grow their money in most cases because they're guaranteed safe. But with these two scenarios colliding, you know, the slowdown in the tech industry and the raising of interest rates, it was again the perfect storm. Lots of tech companies right now are looking to gain access to their cash, in some cases, simply to make payroll. And that means that the bank is having to cash out a bunch of those bonds. And now, like we mentioned, because of the interest rates, those bonds are not worth enough to cover the bank's customers. So they're in the red, they're out over their skis, and on the brink of collapse. This is a 40-year-old institution, and this bank's failure, according to the New York Times, is, quote, the second largest in U.S. history and the largest since the financial crisis of 2008, end quote. And they are now under the control of a government regulator to try to protect their customers' interests and turn things around, putting $175 billion under government control. And this has investors spooked across the country. And for our last story today, hope, guys, a little glimmer of hope on two different fronts to do with climate. And it is so rare that we get to report on one glimmer of hope let alone two. I was so excited to see these two headlines. So let's jump into the details here. So the first one I shared on our Instagram stories, if you guys follow us, we're at sugarfreemedia.co. I'm still skeptical, but I am hopeful. According to CNN, scientists are reportedly working on a way to suck carbon out of the air, turn it into baking soda, essentially, and store it in the oceans? Yeah, I'm confused too, but let's go ahead and walk through the detail details as I understand them. Now, I do have to issue a little warning, heads up. Science is not my background. I'm relaying this information as I understand it from a limited amount of research, but if you work in this field and feel like I am completely misconstruing something or not describing it properly in any way, please do reach out. I have all of our contact information in our show notes, but this study was published on science.org and I went ahead and added a link to our website transcript of this episode. So if you're interested in reading the actual scientific study, you can do so there. And it claims to be three times as effective as the current carbon capture efforts that are underway, which is amazing. A professor at the University of Edinburgh in Scotland who specializes in carbon capture and storage called this new technology, quote, novel and elegant, end quote. And he was not involved in the study in any way. Now, there are a few concerns coming along with this, naturally. First is scale. Could we really capture enough of the carbon in the air to make a difference? And if we could, could the oceans handle it all? You see, they would need to dump a ton of sodium bicarbonate into the oceans. And scientists now are pretty confident that given the size of our oceans, this really would not make an impact on its chemistry or biology. 
but who knows what side effects it could cause. And it is definitely something worth looking into before we get too excited because as we know, our oceans are already under tremendous strain. But the answers to the climate crisis likely lie in something along these lines of carbon capture or at least several systems working in tandem. But speaking of our oceans being under tremendous strain, I know I've gotten you guys invested in corals, and I am certainly invested in corals, as they are an integral part of our ecosystems as human beings, and they're dying in mass amounts. If you guys would like a more in-depth look at this subject, we have a whole bonus episode on corals further down in our feed. So you can just scroll down. You'll see bonus in all caps and then corals. But that will give you a more in-depth backstory. But essentially, over half of the Australian Great Barrier Reef is dead already. And white skeletal structures are left behind as ghosts of their formerly vibrant, colorful, communal selves. And you see, as neither plant nor animal, corals were once home to hundreds of other species of sea life. They were truly bustling communities with highway systems and friendships and predators and more. If you've ever seen Finding Nemo, you know the vibe. But this is real life. They were bright and busy and, again, beaming with life, but no longer. And the more the corals die, the more life underwater is threatened generally. And millions, if not billions, of human beings in this world survive on seafood. Imagine if they could not rely on that food source anymore. It's scary. And honestly, it's where we've been headed for a while now. But as we know, scientists have been hard at work trying to find solutions to the climate crises, various spinoff issues like what's going on with our coral reefs. And now scientists working tirelessly on saving the corals may have hit on something, you guys, a glimmer of hope. They have discovered that there are two species of coral, somewhat common ones, that seem to be more tolerant of the higher temperatures in the ocean that are killing off all their peers. Now, these two species may not be enough to repopulate all the reefs that we have lost, and they certainly won't have the same biodiversity as before, but it's a start. And maybe there's a way to subbreed these two species to add to a little more diversity. But they have conducted research with both of the species indoors as well as offshore in Hawaii. And they believe that these two can survive climate change. It's hope, you guys. Some actual tangible hope. As always, we'll keep you guys posted. And that is the news du jour. Today, I wanted to leave you guys with the quote, in wildness is the preservation of the world. If you enjoyed this episode, please subscribe on whatever podcast platform you use to listen. A rate and review or shout out on social media would mean the world to us and help us be able to keep creating the news du jour. But the best way to support all of our work is to become a patron at www.patreon.com forward slash sugarfree media. You can also follow us on social media under sugarfreemedia.co on Instagram and just sugarfree media, all one word on TikTok. We appreciate you listening and look forward to telling you about the news again next time on News Du Jour. Broadcasting from... Oh. Oh.